Okay, more solving formulas. This time we're going to undo more than one operation. So there may be two operations applied. So we're going to have examples like 35 and 36 in the text. Examples just like 37 through 40. Examples just like 41 and 42. And examples just like 44 and 43. So hopefully I'll be able to show you how to do your homework. Okay, so let's start with these guys. Y equals A plus B minus C. Solve that for A. First thing, put an arrow on the A. We need A on its own. Now let's think of an example with numbers. If we had 10 equals 2 plus X minus 6, okay? Um, of course, we could, in this case, we could put 2 and negative 6 together, and that would be negative 4, so you'd have 10 equals uh, x minus 4. Then just add 4 to both sides, and sure enough, 14 equals x, or x is 14. And that works, because 2 plus uh, 14 is 16 minus 6 is 10. Another way to do it is to subtract 2 from both sides. Okay? And then at the same time, Add 6 to both sides. You can do that, two operations at once. Now you'll get 10 plus 6 minus 2 is equal to, these cross cancel. I mean, these make 0, they don't cross cancel. 2 and negative 2 make 0. Negative 6 and positive 6 make 0. So that equals x. And of course, 10 and 6 minus 2 makes 14, right? So of course, we have x is 14. So in this equation, we could, to get A by itself, we could subtract B from both sides. And all at the same time, add C to both sides. Okay? So we could get, um, you know, Y plus C minus B is equal to A. Or you could have written Y minus B plus C equals A. That's the same thing. Why are these both the same, by the way? These equations are both the same because we've got a negative b in both cases, right? And we have a positive c in both equations on this side. So, so these are the same. So for fun, just go ahead and solve this one. If you had p equals b minus a plus c, solve that one for c. So get c by itself. So we got to think what's been done to C. Um, we have, and we could, for fun, you could change the subtraction sign to plus negative. So you could think that we've got B plus negative A plus C. So what's been done to C? B is being added, and negative A is being added. To undo adding B, subtract B. To undo adding negative A, add positive A. So subtract B and add A to both sides. Now we'll get P minus B plus A equals C, okay? Let's have a look at this one. P equals 2L plus 2W, solve for W. First step, put an arrow above the one you want to find. You want to find W, so put an arrow above the W. What's been done to W? W has been multiplied by 2, then 2L is being added on. So the question is, what do we do first? Do we subtract 2 from both sides, or do we get rid of this first? And the answer is, always do the last operation first. Best thing to do is subtract 2L from both sides, first of all, and get P minus 2L equals 2W, okay? And now we have 2 been multiplied by W, so divide both sides by 2. If I divide this side by 2, I get these two cross cancel, they make ones. I get one W or W. If I divide this side by two, it must divide all of this side also by two. So I get P minus two L all over two equals W. So just for fun, go ahead and try this one. P equals two L plus two W, solve that for L. Okay, so you wanna solve for L. Go. Press pause and see if you can do it. L has been multiplied by 2. Then 2W has been added. 
So subtract 2w from both sides. And we come up with p minus 2w equals 2l. Now we get rid of the, the multiplying by 2. So divide both sides by 2. And we have um, p minus 2w all over 2 equals l. Okay. So on to these ones. Like 37 to 40 in the text, a equals a half times b times h. Solve that for b. Put an arrow on the b, first of all. How do we get rid of the half? Uh, most, a lot of people, they like to divide by a half. That's okay. But it doesn't really help that well. If we divide by a half, okay, I'll do this. a equals one half b h. Most people, they divide by a half. Now you've got a over a half. Now a, a over a half is a divided by a half, which is a multiplied by the reciprocal 2, or 2a. Two so instead of dividing by a half, it's a lot easier to multiply by 2. So let's go ahead and do that to begin with, because if I multiply this side by 2 over 1, you see, these 2's will cross cancel. So multiply both sides by 2 over 1, or 2. So these 2's cross cancel, you see, and you're left with 2 over 1a, or 2a, equals b h. Now how do you get b by itself? b has been multiplied by h, so divide by h on both sides, right? So you should get 2a all over h equals b. So let's have a look at this one. Again, um, we're looking for r squared now. Solving for r squared means, you know, you just want r squared by itself. Not r, but r squared. So r squared has been multiplied by pi and multiplied by h, and then multiplied by a third, right? So most people, they like to divide by a third on both sides. You know, and, and that's okay, but you must understand on the left, you would have v divided by one third. And dividing by a fraction, we flip the one on the right and multiply, so that's v multiplied by 3 over 1, or v multiplied by 3, or 3v, three okay? So dividing by a third is the same as multiplying by 3. It's a lot easier to just multiply by 3 right away. So just multiply this side by 3 over 1. And if you multiply this side by 3 over 1, you must multiply this side also by 3 over 1. So you should get 3 over 1v, or 3v equals, and these 3's cross cancel now, pi r squared h. Now you're back to something you've seen before. You're looking for r squared. It's been multiplied by pi and h. What should you do? Divide by pi h, right? Now these will cross cancel, so will these. So divide both sides by pi h. And you should get 3v over pi h equals r squared. r squared, and that's the answer, okay? Let's have a look at this one. Solve this for h. Get h by itself. <coughs> You know, and again, most people like to straight away divide by a half on both sides. That's correct. It's just cumbersome and not neat. And you can't have a half on the bottom of your answer. I mean, you know, my point is you, you can't have an answer with uh, A over uh, a half in it. I mean, you can't have fractions as part of your denominator. That has to turn into 2A anyway. So... Don't divide by a half. Instead, multiply both sides by the reciprocal or by the denominator. So multiply both sides by 2 over 1. And we've practiced this in the previous section, so we should be used to it by now. These 2's cross cancel, and we have 2a equals h times a plus b. Now we're solving for h. What's being done to h right now? h has been multiplied by this thing in parentheses. So, would you believe, to get rid of this thing, you, you can divide by all of this, divide by the entire a plus b in parentheses, and do it on both sides. Okay, now this whole thing cross cancels, and you're left with 2a all over a plus b 
equals h. And you can leave that in parentheses if you like. Don't have to though. So go ahead and solve this one for fun. Solve that for a. Your first step for, for little a, by the way, your first step might be to get rid of the half. That might be a good idea. So you know how to do that. When you've got an, an equation and there's a fraction in it, try and get rid of the fractions by multiplying by the denominator. So multiply both sides by 2 over 1, right? By 2. So we should have 2a equals, these twos cross cancel, h times a plus b. Hmm. How do we get a by itself? From this point, there's two ways of doing it. I'll do both. You might want to think of this. Okay, b, what's been done to a? b is being added to it, and then it's all been multiplied by h. So to get a by itself, we subtract b and then divide by h. Or which do we do first? Always do the last operation first. So divide by h first of all. And now these h's cross cancel, and you get 2 times big A over h equals A plus B. Now subtract B from both sides, and we get 2 times big A, capital A over h minus B equals A. And notice that this, these are separate altogether. Some people like to do this. They like to go... Uh, <laughs> They like to go 2a over h, and somehow the b ends up being down here as part of the fraction, or 2a minus b all over h. This b is not part of this fraction. It's completely separate, so you need to write it separately. So this is wrong, and this is wrong. Can you see that? Okay. Another way to solve that one is... Uh, okay, we multiply both sides by 2 over 1, and now we could do this, um, and this is also correct. You could have 2 times capital A equals, and multiply the H through to get HA plus HB. So apply the distributive property, you know, then you can subtract HB from both sides and get uh, 2 times big A minus HB equals HA and then divide both sides by h. That's also correct, okay? 2a minus hb all over h equals a. But, I mean, the first example was preferable. So, let's have a look at some questions like 41 and 42. x equals negative say, c over 5a. Solve that for c. Okay? So again, we think about what has been done to C. C has been negatived or multiplied by negative 1. Then it's been divided by 5A. So the first thing done, it's been negatived. The second thing done, multiplied by 5A. Always do this, undo the second thing first. So what we could do is get rid of the denominator. How would you get rid of that denominator? You'd multiply both sides by 5a over 1. So to un, or, or to th think even better, to think about it, to undo dividing by 5a, multiply both sides by 5a, or 5a over 1, right? So on the left you'll have 5ax equals, and these cross cancel because they're exactly the same, and they make 1s, uh, equals negative c. Now how do you get c by itself? C has been multiplied by negative 1, isn't it? That's negative 1C. So to undo that, divide both sides by negative 1. And we get 5AX over negative 1, or negative 5AX equals C. Does that make sense? Right? So uh, I guess I should give you an example just for fun. If you had, say, X equals negative A, over 3y, solve that for a. Solve that for a. So press pause and do it. Okay, so here's the answer. a has been negative, then divided by 3a. 
Undo dividing by 3 or 3 y. Undo dividing by 3 y first. Multiply by 3 y over 1 on both sides. Okay. On the left, we should get 3yx equals, and these 3s cross cancel, and the y's cross cancel equals negative a. Now that's negative 1a, so to get a, a by itself, divide both sides by negative 1, and we should have negative 3yx equals a. Okay? Now, this question, x equals negative c over 5a for a. We've got to solve for a this time. That's kind of funny, isn't it? And would you believe the first, the easiest thing to do is to get rid of all denominators, as usual. So multiply by both sides by 5a over 1. So you'll notice whenever we have an equation with fractions, we always get rid of the fractions. And that applies in, you know, chapter 3 and chapter 4. So 5ax equals, and these 5a's cross cancel, negative c. Now remember, what are we looking for? We're looking for a, aren't we? And you know what to do now. a has been multiplied by 5 and by x. So divide by 5x on both sides, right? So these 5's cross cancel, the x's cross cancel. We should have a equals negative c over 5x, which can also be written negative in line with the fraction bar c over 5x. And this is the preferable way, to have your negative sign in line with the fraction bar, instead of up here, okay? So just for fun, I'll give you an example. If you had y equals negative b over um, 3a, and you want to solve that for a, what would you do? So go ahead and press pause and see if you can figure it out. Press pause. And the answer is, whenever we have an equation with fractions, we try and get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by the denominator, 3a over 1, 3a, right? Now, when we do that, on the left, we get 3ay, and on the right, these 3s cross cancel, so that the a's, they leave 1s equals negative b. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for a, not b. So, put an arrow on the a. Divide by 3y on both sides, and we should have a equals negative b over 3y. Okay, negative b over 3y. Now, let's have a look at a question like 44. w equals hx plus t for h. Solve for h. So this could be a wage is equal to your hourly pay times the number of hours you work plus your tips in a uh, restaurant, for example. Let's say you work in a restaurant. So let's put numbers in there for fun. Let's say our wage was $430 for the week. And let's say we did not know our hourly pay, but we did work 40 hours and we got $30, $30 in tips. So obviously the answer is you know, you're solving for H, what's H? H is obviously 10, isn't it? Because 10 times 40 is 400 plus 30, 430. Now, to get H by itself, though, theoretically, we need to subtract 30 from both sides first. That's the easiest thing to do. Because, let's think about it, H has been multiplied by 40, and then 30 has been added. Always undo the last operation first. So, sub so subtract 30 first of all, and you get 430, minus 30 over, oh, sorry, excuse me, 430 equals, sorry, h times 40, okay, and h has been multiplied by 40, so divide both sides by 40, and we'll get h, so we'll get, you know, 430 minus 30, all over 40, equals h, which, of course, is, you know, 400 over 40, 10, 10 dollars per hour. Okay, so if we were, start, and it, it makes sense with numbers, doesn't it? So with letters, if I have a weekly wage, and it's equal to hourly pay times number of hours plus T, what do we need to do? We need to subtract T from both sides, first of all, okay? And we'll have W minus T equals HX. Now H has been multiplied by X, so divide both sides by X. And we have W minus T all over 
x equals h because these x's cross cancel. Okay. Uh, question forty three. Y equals m x plus b. Solve that for b. What do you think? All you have to do is subtract the mx from both sides. Okay. And you'll have y minus mx equals, this makes 0, b. So mx is just a number. I mean, if you had y equals 5 plus b, you just subtract 5 from both sides, wouldn't you? And you'd get y minus 5 equals b. So this mx is just its own number, and that's the answer. b equals y minus mx.